Strange Meeting by Wilfred Owen. Uh, we're going to learn about what makes an effective opening to a poem as well as an effective ending. We're going to learn about the poet's use of allegory and we're going to learn about half rhyme and why poets use this half rhyme. Um, good starter activities, think about the first um, important meetings in your life. What were the strangest meetings in your life? This poem is all about obviously a strange meeting and um, it's worth thinking about that yourself. This is the poem itself. Um, I would like you to read it carefully before you actually listen to what I've got to say. Um, it is a very difficult poem and I have to say I've, I haven't yet met anyone who fully understands it so um, you're in good company if you understand everything that's being said here. The main thing is to get a kind of general drift of what's going on and to get the key lines to understand them. Um, so that's a poem. Let's read it through now. It seemed that out of battle I escaped down some profound, dull tunnel, long since scooped through granite with which titanic wars had groined. Okay, so this the poets escape from battle, they've entered a tunnel that's carved out of, or groined out of, um, uh, dug out of uh, granite, and the things that have dug it out are these titanic wars, these huge wars. Um, yet also there encumbered sleepers groan, too fast in thought or death to be bestirred. Then, as I probed them, one sprang up and stared with piteous recognition in fixed eyes, lifting distressful hands as if to bless. And by his smile I knew that sullen hall, by his dead smile I knew we stood in hell. Um, it's a very effective opening, I think, this poem. Um, it gets a bit more complicated, but this opening is fairly easy to understand. He goes down into this kind of tunnel, having escaped from battle, and then realises he's in hell. Um, and that a man springs up before him. We can already notice the very clever use of rhyme in this poem. And the, the best one, I think, is here, Hall and Hell. Um, notice how the consonants are the same, but the vowel sound is different. And this is what we call a half rhyme or a para rhyme. And the whole poem is composed of these half rhymes. And people have said, and I think this is very true, that this is a poem about things not working properly, that things don't fit together. And the rhyme brings that idea out, doesn't it? That nothing rhymes properly in this poem because nothing works, nothing is as it seems. So he's confronted by a dead man in hell, and then um, this man, with a thousand pains that vision's face with, was grained, yet no blood reached there from the upper ground, and no guns thump, thumped, or down the flues made groan. So suddenly we're in this silent atmosphere, um, Oh, in lights shifting from a great deal of kind of noise and pandemonium to a feeling of silence. We see that in the anthem of doomed youth, and we see it in a poem like Conscious too. Um, and there's no sound. Love this phrase, a thousand pains that vision's face was grain. So he's, the face is full of a thousand pains, grained with it, just written with the, the, the pain of what we learn. Strange friend, I said, here is no cause to mourn. None, said the other, save the undone years, the hopelessness. Whatever hope is yours was my life also. I went hunting wild after the wildest beauty in the world, which lies not calm in eyes or braided hair, but mocks the steady running of the hour, and if it grieves, grieves richlier than here. So the poet addresses this person and, and says there's no cause to mourn, there's no reason to be upset. And the um, person speaking to him, who turns out to be his double really, says nothing. No, there's no cause to be upset except the hopelessness, um, the, except the, the undone years, the, except all the wasted years of my life, all of the things that didn't happen. 
whatever, and then he goes on to say this person, this double, speaking to the poet, says, whatever hope is yours was my life also. This is absolutely crucial, this line, these two lines, um, because basically the double is saying, whatever ambitions you had, I had the same ambitions. And this is basically the idea that, you know, the double is a poet too, um, like Owen, and that he went hunting wild. He travelled across the world hunting for the wildest beauty in the world, looking for the, the beautiful things in the world. Um, and he mocked the steady running of the hour. He had a great time, in other words. And he felt, he grieved richlier than here. He, he felt deeply than he ever could in this hellish place. For by my glee my men, many men have laughed, and of my weeping something had been left, which must die now. I mean the truth untold, the pity of war, the pity war distilled. For by my glee my, many men have laughed, and of my weeping something had been left, which must die now. I mean the truth untold, the pity of war, the pity war distilled. Okay, the most famous lines of Wilfred Owen are here. I mean the truth untold. So the double of the poet um, says to him, I'm going to tell you the truth that's never been told before about the pity of war. The pity war distilled. Distilling is when you um, get a liquid down to its true essence. So war uh, at its true essence is about pity. Um, and once uh, this poet, of, by my glee, many men have laughed, was very happy, and of my weeping something had been left. Um, I I'd still was uh, someone who felt emotional about things, but my, my weeping must die, because the true issue is about the pity of war. Um, this picture here from the First World War, perhaps, um, gives you a sense of the horror and pity of war, Owen's great theme. Now men will go content with what we spoiled, or discontent, boil bloody, and be spilled. They will be swift with the swiftness of the tigress. None will break ranks, though nations trek from progress. Courage was mine, and I had mastery. Wisdom was mine, and I had mastery. Sorry, courage was mine, and I had mystery. Wisdom was mine, and I had mastery. To miss the march of this retreating world into vain citadels that are not walled. Okay, so um, now either you're going to go content with what we spoiled or destroyed, either you're going to be happy with what we did, or discontent and boil bloody, get really angry about it and be spilled, die, you know, um, suggesting that perhaps the people who are the most discontent die inside or die literally. They will be swift, the swiftness of the tigress. Everyone will be quick about this. There's going to be a swiftness about war. Um, none will break ranks, though nations trek from progress. N none will actually disobey orders, ultimately, break ranks, though nations are trekking from progress, even though the nations are going away from progress or n trekking away um, going away from what is right. Um, in other words, the, the war is wrong. It's, it's, it's anti-progress. It's not about progress at all. It's taking this backwards rather than forwards. Then the poet says, this poet, the double of the poet says, courage was mine and I had mystery. I was full of bravery and I had a kind of mystery about my being. Wisdom was mine and I had mastery. I was good at what I did and I knew what I was doing. Um, and I'm now I'm going to miss, because I'm dead, the, the march of this retreating world into vain citadels that are not war. Um, I'm going to miss the, the march to peace. Then, when blood had clogged their chariot wheels, I would go up and wash them from sweet wells, even with truths that lie too deep for taint. Difficult lines here, but basically the idea he's going to wash the blood from the chariot wheels, from the machinery, from from the world, um, and wash it with blood truths that lie t so deep for taint, um, that are not tainted, that they're so true that nothing can 
um, destroy these truths. In other words, the, this is about being a poet. That a poet washes the world um, with truth. And that's essentially, I would have poured my spirit without stint, but not through wounds, not on the cess of war. Foreheads of men have bled where no wounds are. You know, I would have um, poured all of my heart, my spirit, without stint, without stopping, but not through wounds, but not by killing people, um, and not on, um, not, not through war. Um, foreheads of men have bled where no wounds were. You know, people have bled inside, and we've seen this with mental cases, haven't we, that people um, in their brains are fatally wounded even though they've got no physical injuries. I am the enemy you killed, my friend. I knew you in this dark, for so you frowned yesterday through me as you jabbed and killed. I parried, but my hands were loth and cold. Let us sleep now. So he ends the poem with this very powerful um, revelation. This, we learn that this is the enemy that the poet killed. I am the enemy you killed, my friend. So this devastating line, I am the person that you killed and I am exactly the same as you. I am your double, essentially. You killed yourself by killing me. I know you in this dark, you know your innermost desires and your ambitions. I know you like um, a poet, as a poet knows another poet. Yesterday threw me as you jabbed and killed. Um, I parried, but my hands were loth and cold. Um, let us sleep now. I was reluctant, loth, I was reluctant to kill you back. I was reluctant to, I tried to stop you from killing me, but I was reluctant. In other words, I died in a, in a way that, in order that you could live. Um, let us sleep now. And then this end, this amazing ending, isn't it? Where they both lie down together asleep, um, dead in the tunnel of hell. Um, there were a number of questions about the poem that you need to think about. Who does a poet meet in the tunnel? Where exactly is he? Um, I hope you've got that from what I said. In what way is the enemy soldier similar to the poet? There's three things. Well, there are more than three things. The enemy soldier is similar in many ways to, to the poet. Almost he is the poet. He is the poet's double. Um, you need to go back over the lines and look and find those. What is the truth about war? Um, remember, the key issue is about pity. Um, look back over those lines. What did both men have that they've lost? What happens at the end of the poem? The poem uses half rhymes or para rhymes. Why and what is the effect of them? Pick out two words that rhyme and explain the effect of the rhyme. Um, look carefully this kind of mismatch rhyme scheme. The words almost rhyme but they don't. And It's a kind of work of genius isn't it? To kind of get that sense of them rhyming but not rhyming. Um, that contradiction. Um, you need to annotate this poem carefully in your book. It is a difficult poem. And perhaps write your own creative response about perhaps a response where you meet your own double as a poem. You know, that would be really interesting, wouldn't it? Um, and then review and teach the poem to a person sitting next to you. That is one of the best ways of learning what a poem is, by actually having a teaching someone else. Mm -hmm.